And here's some more. These things are fascinating. Years ago when I found them, there were two or three that looked like a backhoe had dug them out. But now, I don't know, the <laughs> terrain has really changed. I mean, it's the rocks have fallen, uh, the uh, overgrowth is just incredible. I can't believe how long it took us to get up here. And at one point, it would have been a real easy hike because it was all rock. But now, as you can see, some of the growth down there in the... Uh, that pool, I call that a pool because it's a little larger than the rest of uh, these tubs. Yeah, we'll walk, we'll walk that way. See if I can keep filming and walking through here. That noise you hear is my walking stick for the snakes. Make sure they're knowing we're coming. As long as they know we're coming, they'll be gone before we get there. But. As you can see, the water just runs, runs nice down through here, but then it just, it fills up these little tubs, which uh, some people might call pools, but back then, uh, old Jacob, he probably just saw tubs because that's how they used to do things, was fill up a tub and take a bath. So, now, as you can see, here's another one. No, it fascinates me how square some of these sides are. It's in 90 degree cuts. But anyway, we'll keep trucking here. Hopefully the camera is working right for the shaking. But I can't guarantee anything with these modern technology. But Weinstein said that Advancement in technology is like putting an axe in a criminal's hands. But anyway, you see the cattails growing through here. And uh, this is a pretty big area here of water. So I'm going to shut it down until we get to this next area. Because it's kind of hard to hold this and film at the same time. Huh? That's a bigger tub there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there he says this is a bigger tub here. Yeah, as we come down, we just keep running into them. And as you can see, I don't know if you can hear the water flowing through here. But if you look right here, it kind of comes up over this past Larry here. Let me show you. It comes up right in there. And then it runs down through here. And then it makes this tub here. And then it stops right there, but it goes underground again. I'm sure as we go down a little further, we'll run into another little tub here. Some of these are actually years ago were even fuller with of water with, than this. But anyway, we're gonna continue on. Like I said, we still got a few hours to get out of here, so we're burning daylight. But I just wanted to. Uh, show how intermittent these things are and how the water fills these pockets up. So, onward we go. Here we are again, here's the next level. This is one of the areas I was talking about, but I think, like I said, this train has changed. But see how square, how flat these rocks are in through here? When this filled up with water, it looked like a backhoe had been out here and dug this out but as you can see rocks have fallen they've fallen back in there too so this has definitely changed probably the course of the water flow also but anyway it's kind of hard to hike and film at the same time that's what I meant to say earlier is hike not film but anyway you can see how this is all kind of squared off in through here goes into levels but this is what I believe that <clears throat> Jacob was talking about in his, his map the tubs and of course we'll explain that map because that map has been disregarded it's also been <laughs> different versions of it because the original was actually sold on the streets of uh, Phoenix and Tucson by Julia Thomas to revamp some of her money, 
least that's what I understand. I mean, some of the experts may disagree with that, but that's what I understand in the stories I read and the manuscript I read from Holmes and so forth. So, and again, it may be my memory or recollection of it because it's been a while. But I decided that, like I said, it was time for Jacob Waltz to be vindicated. So, we'll let you decide in the long run what, uh, if you think it's Jacob's mind or not. I didn't go into mine shaft. Maybe next time I will show you the dirt in the back. But I did show you the Criscola. If that's how it's Criscola, yeah, Criscola. And uh, that's associated with the Waltz's mind, so. Anyway, I'll carry on. If I find anything else that's interesting, I'll break out the camera again. And here is the, uh, we're across the way from the shaft, across the wash from the shaft now. And this is what I believe this, and uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is the, what I believe on Dr. Ruth map to be the Kinkasa, which just means cave house or cave home. But as you can see, this bends around and it's pretty big. It's brushy, a lot brushier now than when I found it in 1982, but a lot more brushy. In fact, I was out here five years ago and it wasn't this brushy then either. The place is growing up considerably and fast. I don't know if you can see it, but five years ago I had my crossbow out here. And I shot an arrow, and if you can see it or not, that arrow is still there, still sitting there. A little bolt sitting there. Actually, two of them, each side of that hole there. And there was a Gila monster that was, well, I can't see the ledge now because all the overgrowth, but there was a Gila monster. If I can find it, I'll bring up the picture of it and show you the picture. He sat there. I saw him for, when I was there, let's see, it was five years ago. And then about seven years, about two years before that, he was sitting there. And when I came out here, <laughs> he was still sitting there. I thought it was kind of interesting. And I shot the arrow at the hole, thinking that it may be a snake hole. Of course, you can tell I missed. I'm not a very good shot. But anyway, but that's that. Now, if I walk over here, I can get a little idea of how big this is. I kind of wonder if it's the... Uh, there's a legend about a funnel mine. And this is kind of shaped like a funnel. If I could get a, if it wasn't so overgrown, you'd be able to see that. It kind of thins out, goes down. Let me see if I can get over here a little bit. It kind of narrows out into the bottom. It, again, I don't want to pan out too much, but really overgrown now. But anyway, if we go back over here, and I'll show you the cave house that I believe they uh, I know years ago when I found it they had fire there's my buddy Larry again oh, let me pan back out here where you at Larry there he is that's the hiker alright if we go over here you can see this is what I believe was the on the map it says uh, Concasa which is cave house I believe, so I've been told. But this goes back a little ways, not real far. But then there's a little side that, uh, I don't know if it's still there. I'm not really going to go in all these places, but there's a, uh, you can tell where they had a fire and stuff built in right there. So this was most likely a living quarters. And it's cooler in here, in this, uh, shaft thing here than or cave house than it is uh, over in the mine shaft. The mine shaft is probably uh, at least 10 degrees warmer inside than it is outside. And a buddy of mine years ago explained, well, if the vein of gold is what Jacob said, almost two foot in diameter and runs the side of the mountain 300 feet, then it's like a thermal because gold is a very good conductor of heat. So anyway. All right, next stop will be the uh, tubs that nobody's ever been able to figure out what it meant on that map and part of why that map has been disregarded. And again, I'll explain 
what happened with that map if I haven't already.